Hey, what's up? This is Eddie Gray. Welcome to the channel, The Modern Creative, where we help you become a better producer. And today we're taking a look at Crispy Clip. This is a brand new plugin by Yum Audio. And if you've been following my channel, you know that I am a massive fan. Now, you probably don't use a clipper right now, and I find the people that don't, it's usually because they don't know what a clipper is, they don't know how and when to use it, and then on top of that, they think that it's some kind of limiter, which it's related, but it's not a limiter. Now, a quick story before we start. I just finished a project for a client, and I was at that post-production phase, and I was happy with the arrangements, happy with the songs, just everything about it was working. But I wasn't getting the record to pop, and I love to listen to songs and records that hit you in the face, that jump out of the speakers. And so God is so good. I got an email from Yum Audio asking if I wanted to try out this plugin. Of course I said yes. I slapped it on the master bus and it was pure gold. So I wanna go ahead and take a look at some of its distinct features. Let's go. Okay, so let's look at Crispy Clip. To sum it up, this is a tool that can precisely and dynamically shape your sound. This versatile tool combines the ceiling parameter along with the push parameter, which is going to drive audio harder going into the clipper. Now, both of these in tandem are gonna help you strike the ideal balance between preserving audio dynamics and attaining desired clipping outcomes. Most clippers don't have a way for you to visualize the process sound. And that makes it pretty tough to do your clipping job. Crispy Clip, on the other hand, has an awesome visualizer with a ceiling display that makes it easy to see what you're doing. By clicking this button right here, an extended menu will appear. And these options are going to allow you to tailor the display to your preferences while you are shaping your sound. The clip indicator changes the color of the waveform when clipping occurs. Scroll mode on the right hand side allows you to determine how the waveform scrolls during playback. Now this is just really good depending on how you want to see the information. It's a very intuitive and smooth workflow. So here's one reason you should use a clipper. Here I've got a drum performance and this snare is standing out like a sore thumb. Take a listen. So you can see we're getting digital reds. Let's say you want to preserve the dynamics and the punch, but you don't necessarily want to make anything sound softer or anything like that. This is a great tool. I'm going to press play and using the ceiling display, I'm going to get a sense of where I can chop off that transient. Now, something else to note is if I click on the ABS waveform, I can see the top half of the waveform just giving me a bit more magnification into what it is that I'm looking at. So let me go ahead and press play here. If that snare is hitting your mix bus too hard, that's gonna be a nightmare as it relates to mixing a whole song. You don't want anything to be over or under compensating. So this is a great tool to just manage the overall dynamics. Here, let's check this out. So a moment ago I was getting digital reds and now I'm at negative 4.2, just giving me a bit control over the sound. Now of course we can use this in a much more detailed fashion, so let me show you a bit more here. And I know what you're thinking, hey Eddie, why don't you just use an enveloper or a transient shaper, or heck, why not even just drop down the volume? And that's because I want to preserve the punch. I want to control the overall dynamics of this. And so this is just a great tool to allow you to manipulate the envelope of the sound. The pre-filter button engages the high and low pass filters before the actual clipping stage. This is going to improve the overall sound. It's gonna reduce artifacts in the clipping process. Basically, it's just gonna ensure that only the desired frequency content reaches the clipping stage. So for a song like this, I'm gonna overdo the clipping sound. Let me give you the before. So 
So obviously this needs a bit more edge, it needs a bit more bite. So I will add on crispy clip and again, I'll push it hard into the clipper. So it's gonna sound like this. And it's almost starting to choke the sound. It's giving it too much bite, too much aggression. And so we will engage the pre-filter only clipping what we need. It sounds like this. So there's an input and output slider as well, and this is just gonna help you gain stage throughout, avoiding overload and achieving a clean and polished sound. The mix knob at 100% enhances the overall punch and character and the richness of your sound but you can actually preserve the natural dynamics by backing off a little bit reintroducing the unclip sound so that will look something like this let's remove crispy clip here we are Okay, let's bring it back into the fold. Now I'm loving what's happening. Just wanna use the input and output sliders just to kind of balance things out a little bit. So I'll just bring this down to like, let's say negative one, and then just bring down the output just a little bit as well. All right, here we go. Okay, one more time before. Crossover control will allow you to process specific parts of the frequency split. This is gonna give you a lot of flexibility when you're clipping. Go ahead and take a listen to this loop. So let's say I wanted more aggression, more energy, but I still wanted to preserve the kick. You set the crossover to high so that everything in the low frequency is unaltered and is preserved. Um, so in this case, everything above 40 hertz is going to be clipping. Uh, but again, I want to preserve the low end. So I'm going to lift this up to like, let's say 250 right around. Let's go ahead, push the audio into the clipper, create a ceiling here, and let's see what kind of sound we get. Let's compare that to the original. Then if you wanted to be a bit more conservative, you can back off the mix knob and then also engage pre-filter. Before. After. Also, for those of you that love just getting out of the box, I love playing with this filter here. You get some pretty cool results. This plugin's true strength resides in its ability to morph between soft clipping, which is going to give you an analog, smooth, round, and saturated sound, and also digital hard clipping, which is usually associated with aggressive processing, which is going to lead to prominent harmonics and a very noticeable saturation effect. Let me just show you this song here. So going into the bridge from the chorus, I'm not getting enough punch. Sounds like this. A very easy way of getting this to really punch is to take that slider and just bring it up. So go from soft clipping to hard clipping. And that's going to give you a lot more bite. Take a listen. You. 
So again, going back to this idea that the music is jumping out of the speakers, without this elevation, it sounds like this. Let me go ahead and bring that back, take a listen. So you can see why I'm so stoked about this plugin. I usually like to insert it right after my limiter, but I've also gotten amazing results placing it right before the limiter as well. Hey, make sure that you show Yum Audio some love as they help us become better creatives. And on top of that, make sure you check out the Eddie Gray presets that I created for Crispy Clip. They definitely help take my album to the next level, and I hope that they do the same for you. Now, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure that you share in any capacity whatsoever. And if you want to support the channel, I've got a bunch of different links in the description. Wanted to thank you so much. I've got so many ideas that I'm about to implode. So I will see you on the next one. Take good care. Bye.